Hello, welcome everybody. I'm Carolyn, your host. Welcome to Weekly Minis, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous Weekly Minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you at the end. If you know someone who should hear about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here. Today, we're pleased to present to you master teacher Kate Evans with a presentation on aerial arts hoop choreography. Kate is a course conductor and examiner for both acrobatic arts and aerial arts. Kate is a registered RAD ballet teacher, a calm dance jazz, contemporary tap and ballet teacher, and has over 20 years experience teaching and running her own dance, acro and aerial studio. She holds a bachelor of psychology and is a course conductor for Alexa Flexibility. Kate has a passion for the biomechanics of dance, acro, aerial, and endorsing safe progressive dance, acro and aerial training. Kate is joined by a number of her students today as demonstrators and we're also excited to be seeing our aerial arts ambassador Freya Moen as they join us now in their home studio beats per minute performing arts on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Welcome Kate. Hi Caroline, I'm so excited to be here again to share with all of the acrobatic arts community some very um, interesting and cool aerial choreography. We are excited to have you, Kate. I know this topic um, has come by request as sometimes new teachers feel challenged and even experienced teachers need some inspiration to put it all together to choreograph a piece. And I know you have, as always, a great presentation. So I will let you just take it away. Fantastic. So yes, Caroline, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, we all need a little bit of inspiration sometimes. And I think um, any any little thing that's slightly different is going to help us on our way to keep the transitions and choreography fresh and new for your students as well as interesting and exciting for you. So as Caroline mentioned today we're going to be taking a look at some different variations for aerial hoop choreography. Now I have to say my favorite part of teaching aerial hoop once we have all of the skills under control and they've got their strength and flex balanced and even is always returning to the idea that we are always creating and expressing through our skills. Once we have the technique under control, we want to make sure that we're exploring lots of different transitions into and out of your skills, as it's a very important part of the student's training. When we start off with a beginner level student, we want to make sure that we're giving them plenty of time to think and plenty of time to transition from one skill to the next. Remembering that lower level students are still learning spatial orientation and they are still developing their strength and endurance when they're on the hoop. So when, what we're going to have a look at now is a primary level student. So I'm going to call out Toby, um, one of our demonstrators, to show us some examples of a primary level choreography. Now you will see that the hoop height is quite low. And this is really important when considering choreography for this level. We want to make sure that the student feels safe and secure, that if something doesn't quite go to plan, they have their foot that they're able to pop down on the mat and secure themselves re-stabilize and then pop back into the hoop. So one thing that I would always recommend with a beginner or entry level student is making sure that you keep that hoop down nice and low, keeping a mat underneath them. And always remember that we want to make sure that before we put our students into the hoop and that they're spinning, that we know that they're secure and strong enough in their locks with their hands and their knees that they are not going to fall out. So there's a few little checkpoints we need to check first. Once they've got all of those things under control and we know that they can keep themselves safe, then we can add the element of spinning and then we can add the music and create choreography. So Toby, would you like to go over to the hoop for me now? So Toby's going to share with you a little routine that he's been working on. As I said, he's a primary level student. So we're going to see lots of little steps in between each skill. We're going to see most skills keeping two hands on the hoop and we're not going to have floor choreography at this level. Okay, so let's have a look at Toby. Go on now, shine your light. Let me see you shine bright. Go like you mean it now. Hit the rhythm and don't slow down. It might be dark out there. It's back like everywhere. But you illuminate when you look at me so
Thank you very much, Toby. So that's an example of some very basic skills in primary level, thank you, Toby, that we've taken out of the syllabus and popped together um, with nice, clean and simple transitions. You'll notice that, as I said, we keep two hands on the hoop and we, let, we want to see him come off the hoop and start to explore some little arms and connecting and listening to the music. So next we're going to have a look, Toby is seven. Next we're going to have a look at another little girl. This little girl is eight and she's about a level two. So we're looking now at a student that has developed a little bit more strength and a little bit more endurance and mostly a little bit more confidence with her transitions. So at this level, we still do have a lot of steps moving into and out of the skills, but we're going to see a little bit more spin happening. So the student is going to be spinning a little bit more. The hoop height is going to come up just a little bit, and we're going to see her have the introduction of a little bit more floor choreography. Okay, so let's bring out Poppy. Noticing how she's testing her hoop height first, and then she's going to set herself in her starting position. Like a small boat on the ocean Sending big waves into motion Like how a single word can make a heart open I might only have one match But I can make an explosion And all those things I did very much Poppy. So we can see there in Poppy's routine, there were still moments where she needed to think and collect her thoughts, good girl, um, and get her body mentally prepared for what's coming next. You notice the hoop did go up and she had a little bit more spin. Another difference between a primary and a level two student that you can see is the use of the top bar. So a lot more use of skills up on the top bar as well as in the middle and underneath. Now we're going to have a look at a level three, four student. So in a level three, four student, what we're going to see is a lot more confidence. They're a little bit more secure. They know where they're going. So the transitions should be starting to get a little bit more seamless. Another thing that we expect to see at this level is expression. So when they use their arms and their floor choreography, they're connecting with their lyrics and starting to try to express themselves as one with the hoop. 
Now, they're still at an um, intermediate level. So there will still be errors in line and extension and um, other things that may not go to plan, but we're, uh, we're starting to see now a more secure performance. You'll notice with the increased strength, we're going to have longer holds in the, in the one knee hang and also the release of one arm. So we're going to bring Mia out now and she's going to show us an example of a level three, four aerial student. Mia. So we can see in that routine, we had two times that we had floor choreography. What this means is it's making it a lot more difficult for the student as they learn to blend off the floor into the hoop. And this is a step up in their performance level. So a very important skill, but is often quite difficult for the students to achieve. You'll also notice that her acrobatic skill has started to lift now. Remembering that all students that do aerial hoop really require that solid acrobatic art training as well as their aerial hoop training. And you'll notice that as they lift up in their acrobatic skills, so too do their aerial skills increase. We always want to make sure that we're putting skills into the routine that the students have already achieved and are confident and comfortable with. So we want to make sure that when we pop variations, and you may have noticed in that routine, there was a variation of a bridge inside the hoop, which at this level, we start to explore variations of skills that they've done in their syllabus work. We want to make sure that they have the original skill very secure, and then we can start to vary it and change the transitions into and out of the hoop. Now we're going to have a look at a level five, level six student. So you'll see now a big increase in performance level. The spin is much faster. 
and the integration between choreography, skills and floor work is very seamless. So once they get to about level five and six, we want to explore, uh, start to explore a little bit above the hoop. So you'll notice that um, the previous student, she did a skill starting to feel how it feels when we go up to rope, but nothing too serious. And we'll see the same thing at this level. Before we get into Hallie's routine, I'm going to teach you a little section of her choreography. So in this section, you'll be able to see quite clearly how we've taken skills trained within the syllabus and popped a variation on top of them to make them interesting. So we're going to start off with our relaxed in the moon skill. And this is a skill that is introduced in primary level and progressed right up through the level. From here, what we're going to do is go into a variation of the skill into upside down relaxed in the moon. So noticing how she flicks the hands and reverses the skill. From here, we're going to take the student into a shoulder stand in the hoop. So the, the student takes two legs up and is stacked and straight here. From this position, we're going to get the student to bring one leg down and we're going to go into a variation of bridge. So in this variation of bridge, we can see the student has brought one leg around foot to head and the other leg is up the rope. Then we're doing a cartwheel variation down to one knee. The cartwheel is a skill that you'll see also progresses throughout the syllabus. And in this variation, Instead of two legs coming to the front of the hoop, we're taking one leg only. And it's a lovely transition from top to bottom into one knee. From there, you can go under the hoop seamlessly and easily. So now we're going to have a look at Hallie's routine.
Thank you very much, Holly. So noticing that little transition that I taught you um, previously coming in there at the end. We notice when we see um, a student of level five and six perform, they're really starting to hit the dynamics with the music. Their purpose and intent behind the choreography is starting to come together. And this comes from having a confidence and endurance in the hoop. Her spin was also much faster and it was a very well paced routine. The floor choreography is matching to her acrobatic arts level, a level six acro dancer, and you can see it's of a higher level to match higher level skills. From this point, we move into the pre-professional levels. The pre-professional levels really take the students to new heights. We're adding in a lot of dynamics, we're adding in rope, as well as rolling skills. What this means for your student is whole body coordination and seamless integration of skills on the hoop as the hoop becomes an extension of your student's body. Capturing the dynamics in the music, expression and artistry all blend together to produce a seamless integration of their skills and what I like to call the magic moment. So today we're going to have our aerial arts ambassador come out and take the floor and she is going to be showing you her pre-professional level routine. Before we get into the routine, I'm going to teach you a little transition um, in Freya's routine. In the transition that we will be demonstrating today, we'll be uh, adding some variations to the elbow hold. So you'll notice in the syllabus, we start off with the double elbow hold, and then we move to the one arm elbow hold. So we have added a variation on this to what we like to call an elbow spin. So we're going to start off with that. So Freya's going to get into her elbow and then begin her spin, plieing, taking the weight. And then she's going to lift up into a knee hang. And then we're going to kip to sit, which is also another skill that you'll find in the syllabus. From here, she's going to move into a variation of a tornado, tornado spin. A tornado spin is a very quick spin in a pencil position. From this position, she's moving into a back balance with no hands which is another skill that we see in the syllabus. Then she'll move through into her back balance. And now we're going into a dynamic drop to two knees. So there we've seen a few of the skills from the syllabus with a variation added. And this creates interest for your students as well as for your choreography. So I urge you to take the skills that you train regularly in the class once, once they're secure and stable, then explore transitions into and out of them in different ways, as well as looking at different ways of executing the skill. And this is how we create variations. So we're now going to have a look at Freya's pre-professional level routine. You'll notice in this routine that Freya has moments where the hoop is not spinning. And this is an important element when it comes to pre-professional skills for their rolling skills. She also includes rope skills, which are skills taken above the hoop.
girl And don't ask why Oh Just take an angel by the wings Beg her now for anything Beg her now for one more day Take an angel by the wings Time to tell her everything Ask her for the strength to stay Thank you very much, Freya. So we can see in that routine, we have some very um, hard endurance skills, a lot of strength, um, working up into the rope up the top. You notice how Freya put on a long sleeve shirt and that was for her elbow rolls. And that was the static section in the routine. So at that level, we're looking at um, a seamless integration of her routine. Notice how she was very artistic. There was no panic in her work. She moved slowly from one skill to the next and took time to express and feel the music. So teachers, as we can see, we've got a huge variation um, in different levels of choreography there for you to have a look at today. The most important thing to remember is to always make sure that you put skills in that have been well-trained. And we like to say that they've been done 10 out of 10 times and then you can pop them into a routine. Remembering that your beginner level students will not have the endurance to do long routines. A good suggestion when it comes to your beginner level students is to have a little group on the floor doing choreography and then some in the hoop and then switch them around. And that will give you the full length routine. As they start to build their endurance and their confidence in the hoop, they will be able to go for longer and longer. Always remembering to make sure that you never pop a student into the skill unless they're very secure and are able to keep themselves safe whilst spinning. So Miss Caroline, that's all we have for you today. I think we're going to have a little chat with our aerial arts ambassador now, if she's caught her breath. I, yes, sorry, I am just, what a gift. I Toby, Poppy, Mia, Hallie, Freya. I think I just, um, yeah, that was beautiful to watch. Um, so a gift in that, but also that you broke things down, Kate. Relating back to the syllabus, showing us how things progress through the levels relating to the syllabus, but also how those elements come into play in a piece of choreography. And so um, there is lots there. And I think you and I talked at the beginning of this too, that teachers could go back, you can play this um, on replay and slow it down, look at it again and break things down for themselves so that they can understand it better in relationship to what you said. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Yes, we do have some questions. If you have questions for Kate, now this is pre-recorded. Um, this will air in December. This is pre-recorded prior to that date so that Kate and I and um, all of her performers could get together and do this and do it for you based on the time zone differences between Canada and Australia. Um, but um, we, um, uh, if you have questions for Kate, is my point, you can put them in the comments and we'll do our best to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. All right, uh, Ms. Freya, we have some questions for you. Are you, can you breathe? Talk, yeah. about, talk about endurance. I'm always amazed by not only um, the capacity for the artistry and the acro and the aerial, but also the endurance and strength, the athleticism that comes with what you do. And so thank you for letting us um, watch that in action. It was amazing. So um, you are our aerial arts ambassador. And at the time this airs, it's your final month. Uh, as you wrap up your tenure as the 2022 aerial arts ambassador, and we thought we'd take this time to brag about you a little bit. Um, and so um, if you don't follow Freya, I will um, and her upside down adventures, I'll put her Instagram link in the comments here so that you can find her and see more of her amazing uh, performances. Um, but um, Freya, if you could tell us how long have you been doing aerial arts for? 
I've been doing aerial art since 2020 and I've had huge improvement in such a short time. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's actually amazing. Um, and what other um, genres of dance do you study? Um, as well as aerial, I do jazz, ballet, tap, musical theater, lyrical, contemporary, and acro. Do you sleep? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you spend a lot of your time at the studio and um, in competitions, yes? Yeah. Yes, I can tell. Um, what a gift. Um, and so what is it meant for you with all of that? Um, I assume you, you must really like aerial arts, but what, what has it meant uh, for you to be an aerial arts ambassador this year? Being, a, being the aerial arts ambassador has meant the world. I've met so many new people and just become so motivated to learn lots of new skills. Well, you've done an amazing job in uh, just, you know, doing what you do and, and, and you know, pursuing your own goals and passion. And um, we've just been fortunate that um, we can associate ourselves with you. Um, so thank you very much for all that. So what's next for you? What, what goals, school, more training, competition? What are you working on now? Well, for the next few years, I just want to further progress in all areas, like hand balancing, my aerial tumbling and all other dance so I can get into Cirque du Soleil as an aerialist or an acro dancer. Right. That's as, well as, as well as um, dancing professionally on the Royal Caribbean or Disney Cruise Lines. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I love it. You know what? Um, after watching you, I I just think sky's the limit, and um, we will look forward to watching, um, everything you have ahead. And and like I said, thank you so much for all of your efforts and for helping to spread the passion, your passion, about not just aerial arts but about um acrobatic arts as well. I know um you are a very um, multi talented athlete, artist, dancer. And so we look forward to the great things that are going to come your way. And I know you're in good hands with um, Kate and um, the rest of your um, teachers and studio mates there. So thank you so, so much, Freya. Um, and thank you, Kate. Thank, thank you. you very thank much you. for having us. Thank you very much to Toby, Poppy, Mia, Holly, and Freya. Did I miss anyone? No. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being here again and for what an amazing presentation. Um, if you are interested in learning more uh, about aerial arts and working with master trainers and skilled professional like Kate Evans, visit acrobaticarts.com for upcoming aerial arts opportunities. Thanks so much again, Kate and Freya. Thank you, teachers, for joining us for this weekly mini. Join us again next week. See you then. Bye.